if you're building a mobile app or a web app and you need to accept payments today, you probably know directly where to go. Lots of great companies have been started in the last 20 years to help you accept payments. But what if your business was launching the next great credit card for millennials? Or your business was based on handing out tens of thousands of cards to your 1099 employees, your 1099 workers to pick up deliveries if you're on demand company? What if you needed to issue a billion virtual cards? You're probably not really sure where to go there. Do you go to Wells Fargo and talk to a teller? Do you talk to Bank of America? Probably not going to get too far. Today, I want to talk about modern access to issuing payment cards and authorizing transactions. So what, the way I want to do that is I want to break down the anatomy of a payment card transaction and show you what's going on. Some people may be familiar with it. Then I'm going to go into a set of APIs that allow you to do that. Different diverse payment instruments, because today payment cards aren't just physical cards with mag stripes. I want to talk about a unique feature for Marquetta called JIT funding, where you can start authorizing your own transactions. And also how to get rich data in real time. So the anatomy of a payment card transaction. Let's start with the basics. You've got buyers and sellers. Buyers are typically consumers or businesses, and the sellers are merchants. Sometimes it's a service, sometimes it's a, a goods. So how does the relationship start when you want to make payments? Well, for a merchant, they go and they talk to a merchant acquiring bank. They establish their, their merchant account. There's some identification that happens, the KYC and the business, make sure they're good people. And if they're a physical brick and mortar business, they get a terminal. Or if they're an internet business, then they're going to sign up with uh, maybe one of these guys, Stripe or Braintree or, or, or WePay, to accept payments. On the other side, as a consumer, you establish an account at a bank. It's called an issuing bank. Put some money in the bank, they, they validate your identity, and they issue your card. Then, we're all familiar with this, you make the purchase. You're on the web, you're on a mobile device, or you're presenting your physical card at the store, and you get your goods or services. So pretty basic, but I want to start with that foundation. So let's talk about the technology underneath and what's happening. So first of all, starting at the left, I want to talk about a physical payment card authorization first. So obviously you're taking your card, you're putting it in a card terminal at the, at the merchant's location. This terminal is sending that transaction online using a protocol called ISO 8583. It's pretty gnarly, I won't get into that today, I don't have time. And obviously the transaction has simple things like the amount of the transaction, which merchant, and a bunch of other information. The acquirer processor takes a look at that, decides which payment network is this, Visa, MasterCard, et cetera, basically by the first number on the card. After which it's sent to, let's say, Visa, the payment network. The payment network's gonna look at the card, and the first six digits tell you who the issuer is and who the issuer processor is that's going to authorize the transaction. It gets sent to the issuer processor. Obviously, the card account is looked up on file. And the issuer processor, you know, the balance is the obvious thing to look at. Is there enough funds available? But there's a lot of other things the issuer can look at. And then the response comes all the way back to the terminal. You're either getting an approval or a decline. On the bottom there, kind of taking it back to where we started before, a day later, a couple days later, the money actually moves from that cardholder's issuing bank to the merchant's acquiring bank. And these payment networks like Visa, MasterCard, et cetera, they're doing a huge net settlement between all the connection and all the banks that they have each day. All those transactions are settling back and forth. So what about an internet payment? So first of all, the acquirer processor and to the right is the same. The difference is Instead of having a merchant with a physical location, with a terminal, you're on a web app, you're in a mobile app. So there's an, there needs to be an API or some sort of computer to computer integration. And so the merchant app is created, web, mobile, and it talks to what's typically called a payment gateway. 
right? So if you look at something like Stripe or Braintree today, you can store cards on file through a payment gateway, you can charge those cards, et cetera. The settlement is still the same. It's the same payment card infrastructure, the same value chain. Where there has not been a lot of innovation is on the issuing side. So I talked about Stripe, Braintree, and WePay. There's a lot of other great solutions on the acquiring side. On the issuing side, there's not a lot of access back to where do you start if you want to launch the next great credit card, if you need virtual cards for some business case that you have. So I'm going to get to that now. So Marketa has a set of APIs that allow you to do things like create accounts, create cards. Maybe you need to perform KYC on those users. There's different business cases for different program uh, scenarios. A credit card, a consumer credit card, is quite a bit different from an expense card used by 1099 workers for DoorDash, for instance. But the same platforms powering both of those types of use cases. You can load funds, you can put controls on the card, you can get a list of transactions, the things that you might imagine that you'd need to do if you wanted to build an app. And also today, the table stakes are you need MagStripe cards, you need chip cards, you need digital wallet tokens, which are Apple Pay, Android Pay, et cetera, and virtual cards. There's lots of use cases for virtual cards. So the APIs allow you to tap in, and it's in a way that you would expect, like in 2016. What does that API look like? Is it easy to use? Does it make sense? And in, in our case, we think it does. The second piece is, what if you want to take that a step further? And so that's where we get into JIT funding. What if you want to authorize your own transactions? Back to you're at the merchant, you're presenting a card, or maybe you're paying in a mobile app. That transaction comes through, comes back to Marketa, the issuer processor. What if instead of us authorizing the transaction, approving it, we synchronously asked you to do it? And so that's what JIT funding is. And so what we introduced is a level of access on the issuing side. And so in a JIT funding transaction, the card has a $0 balance on Marketa's system. So the card account on file, is, it's active, but you can't do much with it. When the transaction comes through again, look at the center. It's the same thing that we saw earlier. But in this case, your back end is sitting behind Marketa. And we're able to take the complicated ISO 8583 that I talked about earlier, put it in a nice JSON object, structured how you might think, makes sense, rich with data, and you get to make the decision on that transaction. So that's what JIT funding is. And there's use cases across the board. We're learning about new use cases every day, but you can imagine with a credit card, if you're originating the credit with somebody else and you don't want to have to fund cards on the Marketa platform, then we're able to extend that to you and you make those decisions. Uh, if you're doing an expense card, I mentioned DoorDash or Instacart earlier, right? Being able to extend those authorizations directly to their back end allows them to make the decisions, apply their algorithms, instead of having to us provide those features. So that's authorizing transactions with JIT funding. Finally, is rich real-time data. Um, so with webhooks, right? Again, what do you expect? when you work with a payment gateway and you're accepting payments. Uh, on the issuing side, you don't see a lot of real-time data. A lot of it is still batch. It's tied up into legacy systems. And so with webhooks, we can do things like, if you're pre-funding cards and not using JIT funding, we can tell you when a decline is happening. Maybe you want to send a notification in your mobile app uh, as, as an as a experience back to the customer about what's going on. Could be a business use case, could be a consumer use case. If you are using JIT funding, you're getting the synchronous call. You get to make the decision. But then what happens if there's a network interruption there? You need to know what the final outcome of that transaction was. So we're still going to send you the webhook. We also support webhooks for digital wallet tokens like Apple Pay and Android Pay for the provisioning process as well as card transitions. Uh, we have some neat Slack integrations and what you would expect around uh, web reporting as well as a program dashboard to manage uh, the system outside of the API. 
Okay, that's all I've got today. Uh, please visit marketa.com. You can take a look at the APIs, the reference docs. You can sign up for the shared sandbox. And you can actually set up a prototype right now uh, with JIT funding, webhooks, et cetera. We have a, a set of simulate APIs that allow you to uh, put that together. And myself and a few of uh, the folks I work with will be out at the table uh, for the next little while. Be happy to talk to you about what we're doing. Thank you.